Hello to everyone except Putin, and welcome to Proof of Concept, the podcast about, uh, you know, concept cars. I'm Alex. I'm Will. And we're apparently running a minor lag because uh, technical difficulties and my dog disturbing us uh, have been plaguing our recording session so far. This is the second take on this week's episode. Um, so, Will, tell me again, what have you done in the past week? Because it has only been a week since the last recording due to last week being just a monster in every way. What have you been it's up to in the last week? It's been entertaining. Well, <clears throat> um, it seems someone mentioning no Russian president names um, has taken a weapon to my exhaust system as when you're driving along, it goes as the box has rotted and it's now bouncing off the bodywork and make the most god awful noise. But it does wait, it does shake some people up. You drive past and all here, and they I've seen people jump and it's fantastic. But um, to news for everyone, I am now going to purchase a motorcycle, which and you're going anyone to die that knows on it. me personally, say again. And you're going to die on it because I I do know you personally, um, and I do you know do that yep yeah that's a, that's a terrible idea. Oh, absolutely abhorrent, and I'm definitely going to die. But my mum and dad have been very gripping on this kind of topic because excuse me, my dad has ridden a motorcycle and has had quite a big accident. And he doesn't want me killed, which is fair. That's fair enough. But do you as know, I am, do you know an interesting fact about my family is is my grandfather's been in a wheelchair since 1975 uh, due to a motorbike accident. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm suddenly put off a bit. <laughs> <laughs> God. Um. Uh, yeah, I know people that have been in bike accidents. Uh, I've known quite a few people, and they've got off lucky. But because I have private land, I'm not one of the elite, but we were lucky to Just get some farmer. land while we could. <laughs> farmer, yeah. Mm. Um, I'm going to be purchasing a heap of shit from a junkyard, scrapyard, wherever you want to call it, wherever you're from, um, and build it back up to fact, well, not factory spec, but to working order. Mm. So fifty quid, pa uh, fifty quid, buy parts in, buy parts out, and just rag it around the fields, having a having a good time during the summer mainly. Um, the weather is great where we are in the summer and I want to enjoy the most of it. Um, aside from that and being told even though I have proof of a brake warning light coming on that there is nothing wrong with my brakes. I went to the garage and they said no it's fine. It clearly isn't. Why is the light flickering at me? Work that one out. You, you... Um, so I'm going to be changing to a new garage because I'm sick of it. Basically. It's funny you but mentioned brakes because I've, I've actually spent the last three days trying and failing to bleed my brakes um I, I, I did it once and i rushed it you never never rush safety jobs uh turns out i've got uh crusty nipples on the front couldn't couldn't get them off. So, so i've only been able to bleed the back yep. back brakes which I, I i think has bled most of the system actually judging by how much air got into it um uh, I had to re-bleed them again, realised I'd bled from the wrong brake socket, because obviously you meant to bleed first from the one furthest away from the um, the brake fluid reservoir. I did not do yep. that, uh, and I got more air in the, in the line. And I had to do it again, so I, I've, I've been out without my own car for the last few days, but it's been fine, because I've, I've just started work at, uh, at a new place. Uh, a well-known British car firm, who... Um, we can never do an episode on now, because I, I can't slander them, otherwise it actually risks my employment so better to avoid mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. <laughs> um however i, c I can laugh. yeah you, you uh, can and i think is you know exactly who they are i'm not going to name them exactly uh, and, 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 no nor am i for your sake yeah but but you could do that and i have to remain impartial which is uh, a shame because i'm opinionated on that brand both for good and for bad um so i've done that uh well oh so obviously, last week of the cursed episode, I recorded down with you in your, uh, is it your partner's flat? I believe it is, isn't it? It is indeed, and yeah. it is. So down in your partner's flat. Um, I went from there, obviously, to my uncle's to stay the night, and then I went off to Suffolk uh, to go test drive an Alfa Romeo Mito, of all things, which is very on brand for uh, today's episode. That and that I learned how to change the actual tyre, to take it off my wheel and put a new one on and balance it. But yeah, I got to test drive a Mito, a 1.3 turbo. So not the t 
top sporting model, but the one underneath. And mm. uh, I really like it. Spicy model. Yeah. Do you know what? The the owner chip tuned it or something like this. So apparently it was around 160 horsepower. Uh, yeah, I think he either chip tuned it or he actually di- I don't, I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure. Mm. My ass dino says it, it definitely had a fair bit of power. Um, that is such a fun little car. Uh, it's got a tiny little turbo on it, so it it spins out really quickly. So, unfortunately, not like any other Alpha I've driven where you, you the whole point is there's no power down low. You need to keep it in the mid and high range uh, of the rev band to actually get power. I mean, my one four seven, you you had nothing about until around three thousand RPM. Until that point, it just had no torque, no power, nothing. It just kind of went. Uh, oh, can we get up? Oh, it, 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 it did. <laughs> mm. Whereas the the Mito. That tiny little turbo spins up quite quick, but there is still turbo lag. So it's this great little thing where you put your foot down and there's nothing, nothing. Bah! You're like <laughs> and it's, it's such a uh, it's a weird little engine actually. It's got no throttle body at all, which I thought was bizarre. Um, I don't know how they oh, work. Okay. Yeah, I, it's the multi air engine. I don't actually understand how it works. Um, someone more intelligent than me would have to explain that. Um. But yeah, it's got no throttle bodies. Uh, I don't think it has direct injection either. I think it has indirect injection. A very bizarre little engine. Um, but uh, that little turbo, it it screams and it whistles. I, I, it's a really lovely sound. So it actually kind of burbles and chatters to you. Uh, and despite the fact that it's got the same steering rack as the Corsa D, if I remember correctly, which is the one I drove and didn't like at all um because the electric it is horrible thing horrible thing lovely to see it. the actual interior build quality is half decent you know it, it's it's fairly good but it's such a nothing experience and the, and the steering wheel was so light it didn't feel like it's kind of the wheels where they seem to have made it properly heavy on the alpha so it, it actually does feel connected i think in the, <laughs> yeah in the dynamic mode i think it's a little bit too heavy um i still i still don't feel super connected to the road it's a lot better but i think it's such a brilliant little car and and the noises it makes because it, it properly whistles and it flutters as well when you're driving along and and uh i think the owner lowered it slightly but he said it's the same spring rate do you know what not no body roll to it it sticks it i liked it i really like in fact i liked it so much if i was in that segment i would no longer buy the fiat 500 because the alfa romeo mito is uh, actually more comfortable and is nicer inside so, hmm. mm-hmm. I say, okay. That's something I was never expecting you to say, I but know. we move Do on. You know what? I, the I, times. I, I, and the thing is, about it, the more you look at them in person, they've got a really fat ass. Like, they've got really wide hips. And I, 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 <laughs> I, li- I like a car with wide hips. Okay, it's it's a good look. We like them birthing hips, apparently. We do. Alex, we do. We I do. see. We do indeed, Will. Um, oh, talking of Alfa Romeos, uh, that is actually the brand of today. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move into it. So Alfa Romeo, Mood Swift. Um, I I have uh, as I've said I am an Alfa Romeo whore. Uh, pictures on the left is the absolute best car ever made. Um, uh, this is my old Alfa Romeo one four seven. Um, unlike the last two uh two episodes we did, you know Peugeot, which is you know very very normal car company, and uh, Isuzu, who again very sensible car company. Alfa Romeo is not. So nope. I've, I've got the perfect example of this. So so my one at the top, actually, uh, that's the 147. That is a 1.6 hatchback uh, that uh, has the fuel economy of a, let's say, 2.5 litre V6 um, and the power of a 1.6 four-cylinder uh, <laughs> uh, with <laughs> genuine race car front suspension because it's the homologation suspension for the 156. McPherson struts on the back because... Of course, uh, be- very very few shared parts on the interior, anything like that with the the one five six and some shared parts of the GT. Very very bizarre setup. Um, the whole dashboard is in Italian. It's all very bizarre. However, on the right, we have here the uh, this is called the Alfa Romeo RZ. Now this this is this is when Fiat Mad. bought them out. Yeah. So Fiat bought them out, uh, bought Alfa Romeo out, and the idea was, right, we're going to make a car that r- proves to you all that we we can still make mad alphas. So this thing is the convertible version of the SZ, which is the car they they did for that. Uh, I think this 
No, this wouldn't have been the first one with the Fuso. Um, but this does have the Buso, which is obviously the best V6 of all time. Um, best by far. No yeah. argument. It was nicknamed... Actually, if you look, it's it's the number plate's got it on there. It was nicknamed El, El Monstro, because it was the monster. Cause it, uh, even Alpha thought this was hideous to look at. I think they're really cool uh, in a hideous way. But the reason I bring this up... A is very because, angry fridge. Yeah, but the reason I bring this up Okay, and this proves how uh, mad Alpha is, okay? This is a uh, two-seat convertible, yeah? With a manual roof. Would you like to know how to put that roof up? Well, any normal car company would make a few latches, move it back. Whereas I'm guessing with Alpha and Mayo, you'd have to call someone to order lettuce to then bring it through so, so there's a shopping the, trolley. I've actually got a full page on this, okay? So, you, right, you, brace yourselves. You, uh, you have to stop the car and you have to turn the engine off, otherwise you can't do it. it you can't do it with the engine on. You then got okay, to, okay. You then got to press a button on the centre console. You have to then get out of the car, lean across the driver's seat, and pull the seat release to bring the seat forward. Which, for whatever reason, unlike in most cars, where it's on, you know, if you're in on on in a right-hand drive car, if you're in the driver's seat, uh, you pull. You know, I leave it on your right for whatever reason. In this, it's next to the center tunnel. Don't know why they did that. Um, you got to pull that, then pull your seat forward. You then got to pull a uh, rear deck release uh, behind the driver's seat. You clip that. You then have to fold this massive rear deck up, fold the roof out of that. You then got to fold the front of the roof, which folds flat onto the top of the roof. I, I, if I'm losing you, please say because <laughs> you got to fold that out. You got to clip that in. Is that done? No. No. Because you've got to now fold the back of the roof up, fold the rear deck lid back down, clip that into place, then fold the back of the roof down and clip it in. And then it the reverse to get it back down. I want to point out, I own a two-seater sports car, my MR2. All you have to do, okay, granted my frame's a bit stiff, but all you've got to do is pull the seat, the roof, uh, unclip the roof, pull it down, pull the roof back up, Clip it, clip it in. That's it. Every other sports car in the world does that. Alfa Romeo decided, nah, nah, nah. We're on some mad shit, bruv. <laughs> so, it just goes to prove that the Italians are absolutely mad. Oh, absolutely. So, with with this level of madness, um, clearly you can expect to see some um, some genuine bizarreness in, uh, in their concept cars. So, with that in mind, what do you think of this? Ooh. Now, this... Very, very, very pretty. This is the 1954 Alfa Romeo 1900 Sprint, which is a production car. And I'm, I'm sensing there's a bit of lag. Yep, I heard none of that, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, uh, Alfa Romeo, the 1954 Alfa Romeo 1900 Sprint, which is a production car. Right, okay. Which, now obviously... Granted, knowledge. You're probably thinking, okay, I'm cheating there, but bear with. Okay, now Alpha sold this, and the slogan here for this one was the family car that wins races. So if I'm, if I'm correct on this, this actually does have rear seats, um, which is just bizarre. What for? Watermelons? <laughs> what? You're not going to fit uh, fitting a child, but uh, you'd end up calling the NSPCC. I mean, if you can fold them enough, you know, bring the knees to the chest. I mean, I, I managed to fit in the boot of an MGTF before, so. I suppose, I suppose, that just play child Tetris. Let's be honest. If if your parent, if you were the kid whose parents picked them up in this, I'd take the fold. Yeah, you do it. You do it. Yeah, you do anything. So this had a in 1954. I remind you. Had a 19, 197 cc twin cam, twin carbureted four cylinder engine, which in this particular trim you're looking at here made 115 horsepower. Which, to give some comparison, in the UK we were making the Triumph TR2 at the same time, which had a slightly larger engine, which was uh, 1991 cc's, again twin carb four cylinder, and that only made 90 horsepower. So. With this, Alpha actually made like a fairly decent engine. Um, so this mm -hmm. thing was uh, able to do 112 miles an hour. And, and again, 
this is a stock car that you can buy. This was this was they used to race these as well, so these are actually very very capable race cars. Um, but what's interesting about these is that they were built specifically so coach builders could completely rebody it. Of course, coach building was mm-hmm. basically well, it's just phenomenal. That's how we know Bertone, Giugiaro, Zagato. Well, it's funny how um, you mentioned Bertone because the first concept car we're looking at today is the Batoni, and I have to... So, they're the BAT cars, uh, for short, but they are... They st- BAT stands for uh, Berliner Aerodynamica Technica, and these were uh, Batoni designs. Now, it's funny, they, are... like, they do look like Batmobiles, but this is... Uh, I, I don't think, because I used to be big into the Batman stuff, uh, I don't think Batmobiles actually looked like this at this point yet, which is cool. Hmm. The closest thing was the Lincoln Futura concept that they based it off, but mm, but that wasn't they're another, pretty. Yeah, that wasn't for another ten years, I think, at this point. Yeah, something like that, ten years. So these came out in so the the black one here, that's the Bat Five, that came out in 1953. The blue one, that's the Bat Seven, that came out in 1954, and then the silver one, obviously the Bat Nine, and that came out in 1955. Um, and they were designed by Franco Scaglioni of House Batoni. If I end up doing a horrendously offensive Italian accent during this, I do apologise. I'm not doing it on purpose. It's, I think it's just hard to read <laughs> Italian words without doing that. Um, Xenophobia. That's what it is. <laughs> what it is. <laughs> but these things are stunning to look at, aren't they? They're, they're very, very striking. I was going to say, if you were... If you walked towards it and fell over, you'd impale yourself. <laughs> well, see, the wings at the back, they are actually taken, and, and I found this out. So, Batoni, um, I can't remember which particular um, Batoni, because uh, it's, it's a house Batoni, obviously. There's a couple of different p- people with the last name Batoni. Uh, one hmm. of them actually used to work in the aeronautical uh, field. So, these wings and what have you, this is all heavily designed using aircraft principles. Which is cool as anything. Because obviously, bear in mind this, yeah. is, this is the jet age, and these do look like cars of the jet age, don't they? Yeah, certainly. So they they look like rockets. So the the first one, and now these, by the way, to to qualify, like I said, these were these were designed uh, using aircraft principles. These were all um, these were designed to be a study in aerodynamics. So if you look at the first one here, the red one, that's sorry, the black and red one. That was the Bat Five. Now this was the first of the three of the three, uh, and this came out in 1953. This was capable of 120 miles an hour, which is actually more pa- more high speed than the the stock one, if you remember, which did 115. Mm. I want to point out, however, this used a less powerful engine. This actually used the um, the 100 horsepower one, and it was capable mm. because they they just managed to make it very slippery. Um, in fact, they managed to make it uh, have a drag coefficient of 0.23. And if you want an a, a example of uh, you know, a comparison, a Lotus Elise has a drag coefficient of 0.41. So a Lotus Elise, which tiny, tiny car, yeah, you know, nothing... Um, There's nothing to it. Yeah, that is almost twice as big uh, to the air as this, th- as this first one was. Brilliant. That's design. astonishing. Mm, especially in 1953... Brilliant piece of design. Oh, it, if if you would give me a moment, it reminds me of um, the old original Tatra, because I remember the advertisement for that was uh, uh, the wind was basically sh- stroking the back of the car where it was so aerodynamic. I believe that was CD like point two eight two nine, and that was I think what late forties because it was um, made in Germany. Not what Germany, Czechoslovakia. Oh, is, um, that, is that the um it, the one that the Beetle ripped off blatantly? Yeah, and it killed more Nazi um high officers than any other vehicle. <laughs> of course, beautiful. It's it's always good when a car does that. Let's be honest. So the the thing with these, you'd think with that sort of thing, it'd be quite light uh but obviously it's still built with you know 1950s technology so these are uh so this one here for example weighed 1100 kilos 
which is about well, roughly what my 147 weighed however many decades later. Did you by any chance cut out of the call then? Nope. No, I'm still here. Oh. I'm still here. Something's beeping at me, which is not a good thing generally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so these things actually didn't... They were light, but they weren't super light, especially because, you know, they were race cars at the time lighter than these. So the fact that these were capable of actually genuinely quite high speeds for the time. That's pretty good, mm. considering they were fairly weighty boys, yet mm. were so aerodynamic. It proves the aerodynamics beat speed power. Exactly. And what was cooler is the second gen, which the the blue one here, which is easily my favourite of the three. Um, they, that was the same sort of thing, but more. So uh, it had a lower front nose. And what what's cool as well? So if you look at the 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 black and red one, um, which has got I just noticed it's got red grills, which is cool as anything. The headlights on that they you know, you know when you have like the sort of fold out to pop of headlights, you know where they they sort of rotate mm. the grill out of the way. It had them, but uh, the lights were on the outside. But they realised that made more drag. So what they did was they they, they moved the lights to the centre. So <laughs> either side of the nose, uh, on the the blue one, the the, the Bat Seven, there's a headlight bulb there. They they moved them right to the middle to have so they could have the vacuum opened, which again completely bizarre thing uh, to do. And they also lowered the front nose and most notably, very very dramatic back wing swooping. Uh, the, yeah. Again, that's it looks like a manta ray mm. well i mean again that's that's aeronautical uh design so it, it is mm. in many ways a lot like a manta ray it's that that they um they managed to lower the drag coefficient from 0 0.23 which again was already low to 0 0.19 uh, it i i unfortunately so it was faster but unfortunately i wasn't actually able to find any figures for how fast it was which is a bit of a mm. shame, um, but yeah, they they kind of kept building. So the 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 one on the 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 silver one, that's the Bat Nine. Now they kind of toned this one down. This one's not as impressive. They just tried to make it look kind of a bit more like a road going car. Um, so the front of it is a lot sim more similar to the the road going cars at the time, and they they made the fins uh, just to look like fins from American cars at the time, as opposed to actually being you know usable. But it does look so kind of like a, a, a Italian Corvette C2, and it's still quite a pretty car, I think. Mm. But no, I, personally, this, the nine is my favourite. Really? I mean, it, it's more of a car than it's... the other two. The other two seem very, again, they seem like Batmobiles, whereas this one actually seems yeah, like a car. They're experimental projects. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Because um, for me, the headlights of the nine are very much Lancia Thesis or Taeus, or however you would say it. Which, mm. to most people, hideously ugly, but I like them. I I want one desperately, but it's it reminds me. <laughs> don't laugh, but it reminds me of the sort of Mister Incredible from The Incredibles. His oh, car that he you drove know what? Now you with a rocket. That. Yeah, yeah, that's actually yeah. Not this. Nah, it's <clears throat> paint it black and give it a blue stripe down the middle. Problem solved. I mean. Do you know what I wasn't? I was not actually, of all the comparisons to a car named, you know, Bat Nine. I was not expecting you to say Mister Incredible, but <laughs> you know, what? I, yeah, no, I get it. I agree. That's 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 pretty slap on. Um, the, the the cool thing about these as well, by the way. So most concept cars and things like that, they get sold there. You know, uh, hey, this is. This is, you know, the uh, the big auction site for this specific car. Buy it for twenty million pound, whatever. They're always at car auctions, yeah. Yeah. These were sold in twenty twenty. I want to point out, uh, the most recently, at a contemporary art auction. So the, <laughs> these are again all three of them fully functional cars, fully working cars. They were sold as contemporary art, and um, the figure they went for was a eye watering. Fourteen million eight hundred and forty thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> and again, these are just that, that would be a nice piece of money. This, this, but this I'd is... spend it on that. This is just somebody who is like, hey, so you know that really pretty sports car Alfa Romeo make? Let's see if we can make it more aerodynamic. 
And by the way, that's why the interiors on these are actually kind of nothing special because they're just the stock interior from what I, I I've read. You know, it's slightly different colors I think because they uh, the the Bat Five had a red interior, the uh, Bat Seven had a blue interior, and the uh, I think the Bat Nine went back to having like a a reddy orange one. But like they were just stock alpha. Like this was just sort of normal. They just wanted to have this really experimental exterior. I think it's such a a remarkable bit of design. This I think it's such a cool thing to look at. I, I, it's mm. something no, that could only really exist in the fifties. I say this: they did, they did make a Bat Eleven in two thousand and eight. That's like a callback, um, which was based on the Alfa Romeo Eight C. Um, I didn't include it here because it's one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. It is horrendous. <laughs> Honestly, just Ming, genuinely depressing you've, to look at. You've piqued my interest because I've heard of that before, and I must see. I mean, you can Google it on on your own time because it's. <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, it's it's like it's like they stopped rendering the car. It's it's like it, it loaded in and then you know, ran out of internet halfway through. Horrible. It's it's. I mean, these are all about aerodynamics. So they're swooping, flowing curves. They're you know these pretty shapes. They're very you know, you know the big wings in the back. The the eleven. It's just cubism is it's like it's it's just angular and aggressive and liney i have you have you got a photo of it up there i'm tr i am trying it didn't not playing ball well when you, when you when you do see it, you know exactly what i mean it is it is horrendous looking and i think it completely misses the point of these which again the fact they went as a work of art i think actually stands perfectly to reason i mean Yes, they're very, very pretty, but the actual design principles of these, I think, are gorgeous. And 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 you look at this, especially the the nine, for example, that looks a lot like a Corvette C two to me. Like I said, I, mm. I do wonder if these did inspire a lot of, you know, that uh, kind of a lot of the sixties kind of style, because that was nineteen fifty. That was nineteen fifty five. That one on the right. It takes about yeah. I think I think it does take about five years or is it, it's two to five years I think it is to to develop a car. So I I do wonder if it, if there's, there's people start seeing this and went, hmm, maybe that's what the future <laughs> should look like. Because the, these don't look like 1950s; these look like 1960s to me. So I yeah, no, I can agree with that. They look hmm. they look younger yet older. Hmm. I don't know how you would word that, but. Timeless I've always. just found a, a picture of a Bat 11, and I'm sorry, but I re really like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you like Proton Satrias, so you, <laughs> you have no taste. No, 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 no. no. Satria Neo, thank you very much. Oh. They were homologated rally specials, All and right. they are monsters. The, the original Satria, heap shit. But the Satria Neo, yes, please. All right, I will, I will allow you that one. You bloody will. So... We're looking here at what Alpha in the 50s was doing. Okay, again, beautiful experimental designs. Uh, so let's look what they were doing in the 1970s, shall we? It, it's it's not it's not pretty. Um, mm. Oh, now my eyes the they sting. Is, yes, but actually, here's the thing. This is where Alpha had been actually incredibly incredibly smart because this is a they, brilliant they've design. actually they've, they've smoked something good because although it is doppingly awful to look at it it's is, functional and it works and it's what it's meant to do is not, as it says it's a it new functional. york taxi this is actually completely revolutionary and i will get to that in a second okay this so the new york museum of modern art they invited the world they went right everyone I want you to design us a New York taxi for the future, basically. Um, and the whole point is it's meant to be environmentally friendly. So some American companies tried steam-powered cars. Uh, Volkswagen, <laughs> again, in the 1970s, they made a hybrid electric thing. Uh, the article I was reading on this went, Volvo, and I'm quoting here, did something else. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that's meant to mean, uh, but they did something else 
Uh, whereas Alpha, they use a traditional engine. So this has the 1.3 flat 4 from the Alpha Sud. Uh, have you ever seen an Alpha Sud, by the way? Uh, I haven't in a long time. I actually went to go for a riding one while I was down uh, reviewing that Mito, and they are a brilliantly fun little car. Um, but they, they use the the Alpha Sud engine and the, the Alpha van. So Alpha actually made vans for a while. They used the Alpha van chassis to make this. Um, this was designed then by uh, Alfa Romeo and uh, a design house called Ital Design by a designer who you might have heard of. Uh, his name was Giorgetto Giugiaro. This is before, obviously, he had his own design house. He designed hmm. this. So his idea... Did he now? Was, yeah, so his idea with this being environmentally friendly was he thought, well, actually, it would be more environmentally friendly to have a vehicle that is um, space efficient. And so hmm. he designed something which incredibly contemporary so i want to point out this to us now looks like a minivan there was yeah nothing like that at the time um this thing is about the same length as a ford fiesta a current gen ford fiesta wow this was the first uh i'm not I'm, i have to take what i'm saying here with a slight pinch of salt this is the first example of a vehicle with sliding doors uh to you know, in, in crew, uh, improve loading efficiency. Um, mm. And I want to point out, like I said before, my grandfather's been in a wheelchair since 1975, the year before this was the thing he did. And he has always said how difficult, you know, wheelchair access is in a lot of places. This was designed specifically, I mean, if you look here on the right, uh, bottom left uh, photo on this right-hand diagram, they actually designed this with the, 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 the thought of, hey, how do we get wheelchair users into this? Um, and mm. make sure they're comfortable. That was a design thought in 1976. They're thinking of the future and they're thinking of consumers. Exactly. They they put the flat four engine in it, not just because it was a good engine that Alpha happened to have, but because it's a flat engine and therefore takes up a lot less vertical space. So you could put that underneath the driver. Perfect for packaging. Mm. It's it's more ergonomic to get in because uh, it's taller. The uh, it. it seated uh let's have a look at this here yeah they seated four passengers and the driver and this thing is is just brilliant actually as as, it, as a piece of design as an ergonomic statement as an actual usable vehicle alfa romeo hmm. knocked it shows it out that alfa exactly they it clearly shows that alfa can go absolutely mega mad but also do something practical and useful for the real world and it yeah don't get me wrong it's got it's alpha charm mm. i can see alpha in its looks not just its box with wheels well but one of my favorite features usable. is if you look at the top in a very alpha way they've put the taxi sign but they've incorporated it into the irish uh, the irish the italian flag colors so they have very alpha to do that <laughs> yeah of course You've got to find some quirks and features somewhere. But yeah, this is... And and again, I want to point out, this is basically the modern minivan, yeah? Mm. They never made it. They just did this. this. Is... No no one no one touched it again. They started building the Espace, what, 20 years later? Oh, a soul like the uh, Pockets. Yeah, I think it was mid-80s. I could have sworn uh, the, you... the Espace was sort of early 90s. Well, you don't forget you had the cries of the Voyager as well. Yeah, but the cries of Voyager was that was a. Ca oh no! I swear it was before. No, I think because it was um... it was a case. It... Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, because obviously I'm thinking of the one we had. But obviously the Americans had a generation before that. Yeah, but, exactly. But yeah, this is because like, a case series. Th this is one of the absolute first examples of that. Um, hmm. The, the, uh, I think it's the first example of a modern minivan, and Alfa Romeo basically made it for the the Monarch Museum, and then basically went, ah, oh, we we did, we got no interest in making it, so you know, have that. And uh, the, again, and everything on my Alfa, for example, was bonkers. It, it, it was a regular everyday car, which they seem to have made less practical and less usable 
for the name of you know style and and design and you know fun and, and this seems to be the most anti alpha I've ever heard of mm. and it's brilliant it's an actual fantastic piece of design um incredibly clever they never made it but the the lancia uh, lancia cause I'm not, I don't know if lancia and alpha were the same company at this point um but lancia use a lot of this to make the mega gamma later on which if you look is very similar <laughs> to this but with a really ugly front end um yeah it's not a pretty looking thing yeah and also the name mega gamma is hilarious to me just hey we've got a gamma and we've made it bigger what do we call it mega, mega gamma, gamma. <laughs> yeah now thankfully they never made that one i wish they'd made this one because this is basically what a lot of modern new york taxis are now so jajaro actually hit the nail on the head with this um mm. But yeah, it's uh, it's mad to think Alpha had this in store in nineteen seventy six. But yeah, just up, uh, up. Uh, sorry, incredibly go Wow. <laughs> no, 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 nothing. It's just that's beautiful, mm -hmm. and I really want you to say that name properly. Ah uh, ha ha! Uh, sucks to be you because I've actually got the pronunciation guide right here. It's called the... Have you now? I do. It's called the Duetto Tanta. Now, this that... was designed... Sorry, go on. No, um, I'm speechless because it's gorgeous. So this and was designed it's, by it's... Pinfarina. Would you believe it? I can, I can, see, I can see how they've worked their magic because mm. that is sort of the modern rendition of your Alpha Spider. Um, sort of well, that is literally what the point was. Exactly, and it looks like Frank Sinatra in the background going along the Amalfi Coast, but mm. it's 2035 rather than sort of 1965. So this was uh, a love letter to the old duetto, the old spider, as you as you correctly pointed out, uh, which is why it's got the weird name. So the weird name, the two is a two and the let Latin letter for D or something like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the two refers to a two seat layout. It it also refers to the duetto, which is the name for the old uh, the spider, and otanta, which is uh, Italian for eighty to celebrate eighty years of a uh, Um So they they made this. This is a, an MX five si size car. This is this is um, uh, you know, two seat rear wheel drive sports car. This is actually designed to be the anti MX five. You know the Italian MX five, mm. and it is gorgeous. What a, and and <laughs> the thing I find hilarious about this is it fully functioning, uh, but they didn't put any seatbelts in it. So people did test drive this, but didn't want to rag it too much because you know if they crash they would die. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, this is uh, and it was more or less if I'm uh, from what I read, it was more or less road ready if they wanted to make it. In fact, a lot of people at Alpha did. So this is rear wheel drive. It's got the 1.8 turbo engine that came from the uh, Giulietta Cloverleaf. This was 2010. This came out for context. Uh, so this was 232 brake horsepower to the rear wheels. That's plenty. That's more than plenty. Only problem is, it was a seven-speed paddle shifter gearbox. No, okay, yep, yeah, burn it, burn it, going forever. <laughs> but for it's, something that pretty it's so it, oh it's just such a shame because it's mm. dropped their gorgeous with plenty of power but they've decided aha let's give it the engine uh, sorry the gearbox used for track racing no you're missing the point the mm. duetta tanta is for coastal driving so you want a six speed manual six speed manual and i'd have bought 40 million mm. it's, it's it's a shame because you have something like this again. It's an MX-5 size car. They should have tried to make it so it was an MX-5 price because can you imagine? Because this would have been at the same time as the NC MX-5. That would knock the absolute socks off it, wouldn't it? Yeah. You um, see that or an MX-5? So. You'd never buy an MX-5 again. Look at no, it. No, you wouldn't. And the thing is, is, there's not an angle on it that is ugly. You know, the back no. is maybe slightly awkward, but other than that, it's such a pretty pretty thing especially with the pepper pot ish alloys um, yeah very the telly staple. dials there mm. do you know what actually looking it's at just... the, the top right it gives me 
flashbacks weirdly to the um the voxel vx220 i can see that mm. yeah angular but mm. in fluid sense yeah and not not the elise which is bizarre because they're the same car i mean personally i i like both i like the vx220 and the elise but i don't find the elise particularly attractive I, I, I not I, a pretty thing. I like them for um, for kind of the awkwardness side of them for myself. Uh, like if I was gonna oh, have one, yeah. I'd have the S one. I I love the uh, the series one one, which is awkward and has a, a an arguably worse engine, um, in the K series. But I love the K series, so what can I say? But yeah, this thing is just just beautiful, I, and apparently as well, very very good to drive. Uh, like I said, no seatbelts, hmm. so people were a bit unwilling to absolutely rag it. But they did have multiple test drives of this, and apparently it was a stunning thing to, and it sounded good. And the apparently the gearbox bit awkward because it's a fat paddle and flatter paddles on road cars are stupid. Yep, but, completely. But yeah, apparently it is a really lovely car to drive as well, which is fantastic. And here's hmm. the funny thing: is here's the funny thing about it is they did kind of make it in a very very Go very on. roundabout way so for whatever reason because obviously alfa romeo by this point is part of fca and obviously now Stellantis, but at the time it was part of fca fca decide oh actually we don't want to make a two-seat roadster with alpha but fiat might be nice to have a rebirth of the 124 um now the one two four took a little bit longer, and it ends up putting it onto the um, the MX five chassis. So it's just the MX five chassis, but very similar components. MX five size car, obviously, um, with the mm. uh, two liter turbo engine from the Abarth. So similar sort of thing there, um, and still quite a pretty car. Nothing near as pretty as this. Don't get me wrong, but I I do still love the one two four. In fact, I followed the one two four through production. <laughs> I was set to be one of the first people in the country to test drive it because I was so like adamant to to follow it through that I I, I like I ordered all the brochures I was going to order a test drive and then I chickened out at the last second because it meant I'd have to go in and pretend that I was going to maybe buy the car um, when that definitely ah. wasn't true. Yeah, such a shame. Yeah, social anxiety has its has its wonderful. Um, Oh, it, it's wonderful. It's fantastic for everyone and everything. Great. <laughs> Tell you what I do especially love about this. So, I, from what I remember, it doesn't actually have a roof. So, there were, would have been things where, obviously, they'd, they'd have to add, you know, a drop top to it. But one of my favorite things, if you look at the bottom right, you can see them. Those air scoops that go into the... So, they, they reach up to the top of the... the the, the back of the seats and then there's an air scoop next to them to like help downforce or something like that which is ah uh, that's that's pretty that's so gorgeous it's it, it just goes to show that people can work aerodynamics into a beautiful way into mm. a beautiful form because they've done it so well and they've taken such time by the same thing I'm actually quite upset that they didn't do that because mm. I think I'd I'd have been Browsing and scouring the internet and well, auto trader Facebook think this, this would come out to look for one. This would have come out in 2013 if they'd made it. So, you know, nine years old now, they'd have been affordable. Exactly. Imagine, Price imagine would again, have gone down. again, perfect comparison actually. You could have had this. If this came out, you could have had this or a first generation Toyota GT86. That, thank you. Yeah. And. Uh, Oh, <laughs> I, this is to me this is exactly what Alpha and, and again very Alpha way they decide to put wing mirrors on it but not seat belts. Um, yeah, just, of course. But look, look good. Just look good dying as well. I just love the fact that Alpha of, of this is very much a it has to be drop dead gorgeous to look at and sit in, and it has to. Uh, and, and actually, this this harkens back to what I was saying last week in regards to interiors, because you look at that interior, that looks very much showroom ready, but everything about that sparks off just, you're in something special. Look at the steering wheel, that's a very vintage looking steering wheel, 
the dials on it they they're just that that sort of slightly vintage style and they got the, these coned gauges pointing at you and no radio obviously because it's a concept car but ah, oh. it made you look and feel like a driver mm. in fact it reminds me of, have you seen the interior on the bmw z8 Ooh, yes i have it reminds me Very... a lot of that yeah i can see that um sort of retro futurist it's yeah very much it, just true. everything about it screams look at me this is what we are this is what i am and you can enjoy it the real shame it's... is actually they never made this um because again like you said this is what we are this is who yeah you know this, this is us that would have been Entropy, such yeah. a brilliant because at the time what was alpha making okay they had the i think they were still making the brera and the brera spider Along with the one five nine, I think yep. they were they were just about coming to the end of production. This is two thousand and ten. Yep. They were, and they were making the Mito and the Giulietta. This would have yeah, been, that was it. This would have been such a flagship car for them had they made it. And yeah, obviously they had they did have. When did the the four C come out? Oh, hang on one second. Well, the concept was yeah. I was going to say the concept was released twenty eleven. So, so clearly that's the way that that's why they didn't make this. Then obviously they must have gone. They they went they went the way of the uh, the four C. Four C. Which okay, perhaps that is the better car, but I do wish they'd gone for this instead because a, I think Alpha, it's great to have a mid engine Alpha. I think it's a brilliant thing. Uh, mm. But I I also think that if you're going to have your convertible on Alpha. It should be a bit cheaper. It should be a brilliant performance car, but it shouldn't be, you know, something for someone who's buying it properly expensive as a bit of a toy. You know, yeah. I think it should be sort of Z3 priced as opposed to, you know, Cayman priced, for example. Mm. Um, but it would have been, this would have been stunning. And again, 2010, that looks like it's designed from now you know that that looks like it could come out as a concept car tomorrow and just yeah just easy seeing that the idea of seeing that coming down the street towards you again much like with, you... the, with the the 1900 earlier imagine being the kid picked up from school in that dude well no one would give you a swirly no but they well they'll probably give you a wet willy saying your dad's better than mine but it's if anything, that's the the fun part about it. It's glamour, mm. but for the common man. Yeah, and that's actually something that that is all, and it helps as well that Alpha's dropping value like a uh, dropping value like a stone. Um, that's one of the things about Alpha I've always quite liked is it it is that kind of. It's not a Maserati, it's not a Ferrari, but it's this really kind of very much the same philosophies of: is it pretty to look at? Is it fun to drive? Does it make a nice noise? Because one of my, my absolute favourite things about any Alpha, and, and if you ever drive, because you've driven my Alpha, have you driven any other Alphas than that? Uh, no, I haven't. One of the things you'll always find with Alphas is they make sure you can hear the engine. And not, not because of the exhaust, they make it so you can hear the engine. Uh, my friend, yeah. he's got a Suzuki Swift, and he's paid to have a big, big fart can and exhaust power, and it sounds good on the outside. But you can barely hear it inside at all. It's actually quite quiet. Yeah. Whereas the thing with Alpha is they, they make sure the intake is growly and snarly and you can hear it really loudly in the cabin. Like, not uncomfortably loudly, but they make sure you can always hear your engine working away in front of you because that is part of the soul and the, the passion. And it's one of these things where between going for a ride in the Alpha Sud and then driving the Mito and then obviously having my 147 for the last you know two and a half years, all hmm. three of them are the exact same in that, that. They make sure that the engine note is this beautiful snot. It sounds more powerful than it actually is. Yeah. That is a very alpha thing. Yeah. And knowing they would have had that in this, which is rear wheel drive, mm. which, you know, great to have alpha return to form with that because obviously they were only doing front wheel drive for decades. They didn't really return to rear wheel drive until, well, until the 4C. And then latterly yeah. the uh, the Julia. Um, this just would have been 
I, and this looks like a mini Ferrari as well, which helps. <laughs> it's it's got looks written all over it, and that's what, if anything, people want. People went to Alpha for the original Duetta, or Duetta, or whatever it said, um, for its looks and the look that it gave you. It said to the people and looking past you and onlookers going, yeah, this is what I am, this is what I've got. And it is just a mini Ferrari. It's, mm. but not a, it's not a worse product by any means. The product dialed down to consumer level, basically. It's and oh, it's on. gorgeous. <laughs> at, at the time of the Duetta, when it originally came out, you could have had that or an MGP GT. Or, uh, oh, sorry, no, with the MG, the MGP convertible, wouldn't it? You know, you could. Yeah. You know, the choices were: you had the Italian sports car, or you had the British sports car. Um, yeah. Okay, Germany occasionally. Okay, I think you know, if you want to go really up market, you could have the 911. But obviously, in the modern world, when this comes out, there's no British sports car to go against. There's only Japanese ones, and by that, the GT86 and the MX5 are basically all that's left. Yeah. This would have been. Just uh, and the other thing as well is thinking about sort of the way internet culture grows and how you the four C as great as it was, it was never a Lotus Elise. It was never you know mega light com- uh, in that sort of sense. It was just light car. It's a very good handling car, but it never it never captured the hearts and minds of like everyone around. Whereas if you had this, no. and even if you d- you d- done the same things you did with the one the the one four the the one two four sorry, where mm. you just just put it on X five chassis. This would have been such a remarkable looking thing, I think. And the fact, obviously, you had the 1.8 turbo back in 2010, or this would have come out in 2013, obviously. Um, I think that this would have been sort of part of the zeitgeist for a fair while. Because I don't think the Alpha 4C ever really was. I don't, obviously, I've always consumed car media. And other than Top Gear saying, hey, this is a great car, no one mentioned them. They kind of faded into the background. No. I don't yeah. think this would have. Because this, this, if they'd sold it at the right price, would have been everywhere. I fully believe that. Yeah, no, quite. It would not have just stuck to a home market. It would have been everywhere. I could see mm. as Italy especially, or at least, you know, Italy, Greece, um, parts of the Mediterranean, for example. I could definitely see this being driven round. Anywhere, if you put, anywhere if you put this in British... Yeah, basically. Um, if I remember correctly... The UK is the biggest consumer of convertible cars in what was Europe when we were part of Europe. But if you oh, put that in, in Europe, for, for as much as Europe can still exist, uh, thanks to a certain mad Russian. Um, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> of course. Uh, also, while we're at if it, we, um, if you put that... support Ukraine. Um, go on, lads. You can yep. do it. Yeah, don't, certainly. Don't let um, old Putin put you down. Not good. Oh, sorry, on a completely unrelated note, my friends, uh, turns out <laughs> the Russians have lost one of their tanks because some Roma gypsies have managed to nick one off them. <laughs> <laughs> they pulled up in the wrong field and they've had their tank nicked. Oh, that's, oh, that's fantastic. I know. Oh, yep, we, we can't beat the Ukrainians. We're being floundered by gypsies. That's fantastic. Yep. Just, oh, oh. that's a. That's a proper two-fingered salute. Mm. Come on, Ukraine, you good. you can pull it through. We uh, you have our yeah. support. I would go and fight if You've I was any good support. as a fight, fighter, but I would uh, inevitably make it more dangerous. I think. Yeah, I'd shoot myself and mm. everyone else around me. <laughs> so if you want, no, if you want friend or foe, you'll be dead. If you want two completely useless people, um, we'll come over. Kamikaze, yes, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you can go first be, on that one. You know, if you wanted to say your last goodbyes, I'm perfect for that, but I'm not coming back. <laughs> but yeah, sorry, continue. Um, we're, but, we're the biggest. Yeah, if you did this, of... in... yeah, as we're big, the biggest consumers um, of convertibles and roadsters, if you had that in dark green, British racing green with tan leather. Um... <sighs> no, you can't. You can't put an Italian car in British racing green. That's just sacrilegious. Well, give me an alternative then. Alfa Rosso, which is what it currently is, which is beautiful. Um, Granted, yes. You know, actually, that's one of the interesting things about Alfa. Um, and thing I was fascinated. So most cars, when they sell, you know, as adventurous, you know, as adventurous they are, they usually 
um, silver, white, or black. I mean, my MR2 is always boggled me because they're a mid-engine car with basically no boot space. You wouldn't think you're going to go, oof, this is a sensible car. I better be sensible and buy it in silver. But no, no, the, mo the most common color, color for them is silver. Even though they came in a beautiful yellow, they came in a really lovely red, you know, no, no, silver. Whereas when Alpha, it comes to color, people are dull. Hmm, but when it comes to Alpha, the majority of them get ordered in red. It's actually it's, it's either red or black uh, for the majority of Alpha models. Um, mm. So 147, it was 49% red, 48% black, and then everything else fit in the middle. It, the people just buy yeah. them in red. Uh, they just go, oh, it's an Italian car, got to be red. Uh, and and very few other car companies manage that, <laughs> which, is, which I find mad. That's part of the fun. It's cool. Mm. Would you like to see what Alfa Romeo are up to now with their concept cars? Let's endeavour. This is the Tonali. And if you notice, wow. on the, bottom, the bottom right is the production Tonali that is coming out, I think, next year. Now, Alpha, you are a sports car and luxury car brand. We have been looking at some of your finest bits of work, including a minivan. And you're here giving us another crossover SUV. And first of all, in the top left, you gave us this very stunning looking concept. And you know what? I hate crossover SUVs, but I look at that and I go, hmm, that's striking. Possible, possible. It's a very nice looking car. And then you give us something in the bottom right, which actually somehow looks just like a Stelvio, but more tired. <sighs> it's <laughs> it, it, uh, it's hangry because it's, it's got an aggressive look, but it's tired. It's got an iron deficiency. It, <sighs> I just... It's anemic. Why? Why did we but, need this? No one need. No one asked for this, Alpha. No. Nah. This is. I like the telly dial wheels. They're nice, <sighs> on both. But but why are they so big? Because it's a fucking SUV. It doesn't stop making crossovers. The world doesn't need crossovers. People Al are mad. People complained over the. You know, we got things like the one four seven or whatever because oh, we're cheapening the Alpha. You know, uh, whatever. No. What cheapens the Alpha brand is fucking crossover SUVs. I hate crossovers. Yes. They're pointless vehicle. There is n get an SUV or get a hatchback or get an estate. They're great. Yeah. Crossovers are pointless. They can't do car things very well. They can't do SUV things very well. They just do a crap amalgamation of all of them. And I despise them with every part of my being. And the fact that Alfa Romeo is now predominantly crossovers in its lineup. Mm. Yeah, that that formula doesn't work. I mean, take Mitsubishi for example. They've pulled out the UK market because the Eclipse Cross sold so terribly. In fact, I'm fairly sure they've they, ruined. They, I think they're no longer making cars now, aren't they? Oh no! It wouldn't no, surprise no. me. No, sorry, I, I'm wrong. I think they are making it for the American market because there's a an Alto and Rally Cross, uh, Rally Mars. Sorry, continue. No, conti no, no worries. But um, the Eclipse for every, for anyone that knows, just to come off subject, is one of the best um 90s sports um, copia excuse me well yeah 80s 90s uh american american japanese sports cars and they've turned it into an absolute dog because they've gone ah yes everyone wants a crossover so let's put eclipse cross and flog it off and it's terrible this i mean for me, the concept is all is nice to look at. Like it's got different door handles and different um, wing mirrors. That's a big key point, as well as the headlights being slimmer and a little bit of grille work being a little bit different. But aside from that, it's the same thing. And I'm bored. It Alpha shouldn't be making this kind of thing. Do you know what's more depressing than, than... about it? Is I couldn't tell you that's an Alpha. Nah. Okay. The only way you. It's, it's, the wheel, it's the teledyne wheels and that grill at the front. But if, That's you, it. if you cover that grill and the wheel and say, right, what car's that? It's a Honda. It could be a Honda. It could be a Porsche. A Hyundai. It could be an Audi. There's no uh, alpha flair to it. There's no... The one at the top left, I mean, I, I, that drama, it's, you know, it, it, 
I look at that and uh, and everything about that screams alpha. You know, you, you've got. And again, I still think that the Tsunami concept is a very not alpha thing to have, but I can still look at that and go, yes, that's got all the drama, it's got all the aggression. This looks like it could be a tied BMW. I, I <sighs> and the worst missed part opportunity is, that shouldn't have been there. When I look at a lot of these crossovers from companies I don't care about or you know I'm indifferent on, I don't care because it's a crossover. My like, oh, whatever. This because I love Alpha so much, it makes me genuinely sad. We've got a company that brought us the gtv6 a company that brought us the 1900 from earlier you know the 1900 sprint the alpha sud which again the alpha sud not the prettiest alpha but actually very very charming in the way it looks my 147 which everyone i i knew looked at i went eh, i think that's quite a handsome looking thing actually and you can pay that for hatchbacks at the time you know the bmw one series the golf knock spots up from style wise the company that brought us the bloody Brera. In modern times, the Brera, mm. one of the best looking cars of the last 20, 30 years. All yeah, I could say that quite a happily. A company that brings us cars that have such drama and passion and elegance. And Okay, sure, they never work forever. They have reliability issues, you know, they're, they're wired up with cheese. Fine. <laughs> but there's nothing the, about owning the, the, Alpha. That, that says to me, uh, yeah, this you is wouldn't boring. trust them with your life. Yeah, but there's nothing about that... Alpha that should that should be generic. And they no, bring us this, certainly not. Which is the second crossover in their lineup. Hmm. I. J- I. I Yawn. I, next page. <laughs> move on. <laughs> it's just it's one of these things where I I I do fear for where the car industry is going. I I think. It's a good thing we're starting to get some interesting car design back. Um, Renault with the the Renault Five concept, uh, High and Die with the Renault Grandeur Vision thing that they've brought out, and actually a lot of High and current lineup, their electric lineup, I think actually looks great. We the sp- Ionic Five, mm. I actually really really like the look of. Electric cars and are even... starting to kind of look cool again, you know. Uh, exactly. The fact I can't look at Alpha and go, yeah, but look at what Alpha's making, how beautiful that is, because what they're making is antiquated. They they they're bringing. They they're making us crossovers very late in the game, and they're not amazing. Okay, the Stelvio apparently was a very good drive. Uh, I've I've been in the Julia Cloverleaf. That's I think a nice place to be. I think the the lower trim Julia's a kind of naff actually, um, but. The Julia Cloverleaf is a lovely car. Um, mm. And again, everyone was saying how it's basically as good as an M3. And they were like, uh, yeah, Alpha's return to form. And they decided, okay, we've had our return to form. Let's put it on stilts and make it a crossover. <sighs> it's not going to work. No. And, and I don't think they're selling particularly well either. Um, then again, I say that. I see Stelvios everywhere now. So maybe I'm wrong and maybe Alpha is, is doing what it does to, to make money. But... The one thing I hope with this is Alpha are literally doing it as a money-making exercise. Because if they're not making money selling anything else, if they can make something that will go, right, we've got a big pot of cash, we can now do the Duet of Tanta. If they're going to do that, okay, fair enough. Because you do need to balance the books because you need money to make beautiful stuff. Well, this Um, is where the hope with this Stellantis thing comes in. Because yeah, I know Stellantis is rearranging, and thank God they're actually making Lancia a sports car company again. Sh- the fact it went away at all is sacrilege. It's just because he was what the Ypsilon, is it called? It's basically- yeah, it's just it's, the Ypsilon now. It's a rebadged Fiat 500. Is all they've made for what twenty years or something like that. The company that had something the- like that. Yeah, it was the most successful rally company of all time for a long time. Um, long, long time. Yeah, I think Toyota's now beaten it, but Lancia had more wins than any other car manufacturer ever, and now it only made the the, the you know the Ypsilon. I think FCA was a bit bit mismanaged, so I think Stellantis has said that they're going to refocus Alpha more toward um, sporty and luxury cars. 
and I think Lancia more towards sports cars, which is that's that's a good hope. And I think DS as well. They're putting more toward that, which is going to be interesting. I think it'll be interesting to see where everything goes with Stellantis. Mm. I see, I reckon Stellantis now because Persia I think are actually quite clever as a bit of. I think they're trying to get Stellantis to be uh, a bit of a, a VAG competitor. So I can see Alpha sort of fit, fitting in the uh, the Audi level. And I think Lancia, yeah. if they're clever with Lancia, what they do is they put Lancia against your Porsche. Because if you, if you, yeah. if you especially yeah, if you use that. the Stratos name, I think that that would be the best idea for them to do that. To go, hey, Lancia's back. Here's a new Stratos. Uh, either that it's or like with Delta. Sorry, um, it's like when they did with um. The Fiat Bravo and the Lancia Delta. Mm. For me, the Delta is not the best, like the, the most recent Delta is not the prettiest looking thing in the world, but of my personal visage is one of the most striking and best looking hatchbacks of the time because uh, it looks completely different from everything else. And that's what I like. I like difference. I'm assuming um, you, you but mean they, the Delta they were... the Integrale one, the, the one that we did all the rallies. I don't know if there was one after that. Uh, well, they had one after that, which was hideously ugly, and then they did one around 2011, 2012. Um, it was oh, not pretty. I think I know the one you're about, actually. 2011. Yeah, that thing. Uh, also sort of as a Chrysler Delta in the States. That's the one, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, God, that is woeful. It, I like it. It's got difference to it. It's not the prettiest, and I'll still say it's not It's not a handsome thing, but it's different. It's not the prettiest. Um, it's not pretty. It looks borderline no. Chinese in design. <laughs> Copycat. But it it's... Yeah, it's not graceful, but it looks different, and it tries to be different, and well, that's yeah, what Lancia that. were, were about. Mm. And they, well, they've, I don't know how many different things Lancia pioneered, but, you know, the V4 engine... Um, first monocoque chassis, you name it. They did so much, and if they can market it properly, for example, the Delta. If they brought the Delta nameplate back, that would be a golf beater. I definitely um, agree with you. Yeah. Um, especially especially you, yeah, like a Golf R, you could have a Delta. You could have a Delta Integrale. Mm. Um, smash the tits off an Audi a, a RS3 or. Uh, a Golf R, that kind of thing. I'm thinking so far is there's definitely a market for that sort of thing because there's a lot of old men with money who are wistful for the past, and I think if they strike now with Lancia, I think well, especially with the Stratos, because if you look, yeah, uh, obviously yeah. Alpine has now come back to life and they brought back the A110. I think you you bring a Stratos out now to compete with that and the uh, the Cayman, for example. If you, if you or the Fulvia. Ooh, the Fulvia also not a bad idea. If you, but the thing is, if you strike now and you bring those back, uh, those nameplates back, while they still have the faintest bit of relevance, you know, I think you think you could revive Lancia quite well using that. And I think with with Alpha, for example, I think what they should be doing now is they should look at the Julietta, uh, sorry, not the Julietta, the Julia, and go right. People thought this was good. How do we make it? Uh, they should make that into an estate version. Because apparently they were going to make an estate version, but they decided to make the uh, Stellview instead. Um, where's the estate version of the the, the Julia? Where is the uh, the coupe version, for example? If if people are looking at that and saying, "Oh, it's as good as an M3," okay, so then let's make it into an M4 as well. Uh, mm. you know, I, I think that's where Alpha has gone wrong with this. I think they they've and okay, they've got to make money. We live in a capitalist society. We can't just make cars for art's sake. They've got to make money. So yeah, I can I can see why they have to go and make these these crossovers. I just wish they would they would try and be more like they used to. You know, where they go, hey, actually, we're going to make something that's so good it's worth buying. And, yeah, uh, and make it incredibly different. Mm, and I think unfortunately, Alpha doesn't have the the spark to do that anymore. Um, nope. Which is a shame. And again, I think the Julia is a brilliant car, and and its lap times and everything speak for themselves. I think the first year when it first came out, it beat the nine eleven around the Nurburgring, four door saloon. You know, they built something that is perfect for what they need, and um, 
and they didn't they just didn't follow it through they went they went with the stelvio they went with the tonali and and uh, to me the tonali is just you read it as toenail and mm. that says it all exactly exactly but then again we're even getting ferrari giving us a crossover suvs now so you know and i'm not a ferrari fan but the fact that ferrari is coming out with a crossover suv is wrong you know uh well everyone's jumped on the ba- on the bandwagon haven't they mm. and what um, makes, what what makes me think about this is obviously ever i think is now just starting to cannibalize their own sales um I know, for example, Land Rover uh, are they're, they're stopping selling so many models. They're thinning out the herd soon because they realised they weren't attracting new buyers from elsewhere. They were just kind of going, "Oh well, I quite like the Velar, so I'll go for the Velar instead of the Evoque, uh, or I quite like this, so I'll go for that." And 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 having that sort of thing, so they're they're trimming down the model range because they're realising actually we've got this massive model range, which is a lot of expense to make, but they're not actually drawing in that many more sales. And I think a lot of these car companies are having that same issue because, you know, we're seeing a yep. lot, a, a few of them are now starting to trim down. I think some like BMW have got a long way to go. BMW seem to just be diversifying as much as possible. And I, I can't see it working that well. Things like the, the X2, is it? That seems to be selling well, but it, it makes BMW look like a cheap mini cab. You've I've honestly that? not seen an X2 in the flesh. I've seen them everywhere. The the crappy, the really ugly looking things. Stafford seems to really like them. Um, they look like if someone said to you describe a mini cab, that's what you design. Uh, they are. Yeah. But uh, that's all I see of BMW now. I see that the occasional, maybe the five series, um, and and the odd one series. So okay, if if that's what your brand now sells, and you're trying to sell me, tell me okay. Ah yes, this is uh, BMW uh, ultimate driving machine, and what you give me is this mini cab. Your brand image to me is is nothing, and the same thing with Alpha. You know, when you, when you've got this history of and heritage of, you know, like I said with the first one, the family car that wins races. No one's winning races in a t- yeah. in a toenail. No, certainly not. <sighs> An alpha should I should see an alpha and it should set my heart on fire. I should, you know, I I should wonder why uh, I am if I'm sexually attracted to women or men or you know, the Alfa Romeo toenail. It it, it should it, it it's something that should evoke a, a reaction. You know, you should sit down on the street and people turn their head and go, oof, that's kind of nice. Yeah, you know, even stuff like the one four seven. I don't get me wrong. The one four seven is a very bland looking alpha. Even that. Has had people go, hey, that's a cool car. What, what is that? You know. But yeah, but it's got. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, that's the thing. It, they they dared they dared to be different, and they wanted to go right. This is what we want to show the world that we can do. And if um people can't appreciate that, then that's their problem. Hmm. But and th- this is them. You going, shouldn't be doing that. Are now. we doing the same thing as everyone else? Yeah, uh, we're following the crowd, mm. and that's not what they're about or what they used. To, you know what they're what they're for. Mm. It just it doesn't feel right. And talking no. of not feeling right, um, I'm also feeling very tired. So I'm going to say we wrap this up soon. <laughs> yeah, ditto. So, I'm slowly falling asleep. So <laughs> I'm I'm going to uh, so, so actually before we do it, what is your your episode for next week, Will? Uh, not next week, the week after. Aha! One that is. Well, you've done Alfa Romeo, which is very close to your heart. One that I'm doing that is very close to mine, which is Saab. Yes, Saab. And you'll be surprised by what I've chosen. Because I I did my research uh, before even this episode came, like, before we started recording. And there's surprisingly a surprisingly small amount of Saab content. Um, Really? Well, there there were there were quite a few, um, but they were mostly based on real cars. For example, I really cocked it up last week, the last time with Isuzu, <laughs> and for example, with you, you did the nineteen hundred Sprint, um, which then became back cars for Saab. A lot of their models were based off original stuff, mm. um, so I've managed to cherry pick the ones that weren't, 
and obviously we know quite a bit about Saab, how quickly things went to shit. Mm. <laughs> um, but, but, but it's like a very, Alpha, very big... Say again? But much like Alpha, beautiful for it. Yeah, of course. Um, it's just... Yeah, one close to my heart, and you'll be surprised. Good, I'm glad. I, I eagerly await it. I also eagerly await on March 20th the uh, Alex Twin Spark meet in Stafford. Location still yet undecided because uh, we're trying to file that down. It turns out organizing events is quite difficult when you're inept. Um, but uh, yeah, I didn't know that. What? But the uh, the location will be announced very very shortly. So that that is um, uh, that is coming, in, guys. Also, the Book of Doom now exists. So, uh, to all of you who have said they want to bring me badges from their cards to put into uh, my collection, the Book of Doom now exists exactly for that. So, uh, if you do come to the meet and you want to bring me a badge to put in the Book of Doom, it is free of charge. Um, and yeah, that's all. That's all from me this week. Uh, bit of a disjointed episode um, compared to last week because you know, potentially World War Three has started. Um, which is always fun, but yeah, that's it for me this you week. Know, we're, we're, yeah, we're all being prepped and prepared. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think I'm happy to call it there. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, good morning, good evening, or good night, depending on what time zone you're in watching this. And yeah, hopefully we'll see you in two weeks. Au revoir, Al Fidesain. Uh, no star. No, that's good night. Uh, bye. <laughs> Oh,